Hi everyone, welcome to my series on animation system development. It's been a long time coming, but it's finally here, and I'm very excited about making and sharing these upcoming videos with you. My goal is to teach you how to use the tools in Unreal Engine that enable us to play back, blend, and modify animations in real time to animate our characters during gameplay. I'll start with the basics and build up a progressively more complicated locomotion system as we go. This series will be split into sections. In this first section, I'll be covering the implementation of strafing ground locomotion animations. In the future, I'll implement a forward-facing movement mode and delve into the ways that you can layer multiple animations together procedurally modify the animation of a character to create a result that feels more grounded and enable more meaningful integration and interaction with your game's world and mechanics from picking up an item to procedural footstep adjustment. But before we can get to all of that fun stuff, we need to set up our locomotion animation system and to do that, we need a character that moves. Now there are two general approaches for character movement in games. One where input is used to drive animation logic and the movement of the character is driven by animation data. And another where input is processed by code that moves the character mathematically through the game world and animations are matched as best as possible to that movement. Now, both of these approaches have their own benefits and drawbacks. Animation-driven movement, referred to as root motion, generally looks more realistic, but is less reactive to player input and requires more types and variations of movement animations to function at a basic level. This concept of having more or less types and variations of movement is something that is referred to as animation coverage, and I will be referring to this concept as that or just coverage going forward in this video and throughout the series. Additionally, group motion does not replicate well in Unreal and thus isn't optimal for multiplayer games. On the other hand, code-driven movement can react instantly to your input and is driven directly by math and logic, which grounds the motion of the character in the game world, an example being the friction between the character and the ground affecting the character's movement speed. Using this sort of system, your character's movement isn't limited by your animation coverage either. However, the fidelity of the locomotion increases with the animation coverage that you do have. And due to the nature of this approach, animations and movement may not always align perfectly, and a good system needs to be able to compensate for that. In this series, I will teach you how to build a locomotion system on top of the code-driven movement that is built into Unreal Engine's character class. My goal is to teach you how to create the locomotion system that is right for your project. To accomplish this, I will be using the unarmed upright strafing locomotion animation set, which was recently released on the Unreal Engine marketplace and it was created by a friend of mine whom I've been working alongside for years now. This animation set has the necessary coverage that will allow me to build a fully featured strafing locomotion system. This animation set starts, pivots, turns, and loops line up properly inside of a blend space without apparent foot sliding or bunny hopping, which results from the misalignment of footstep timing and the animations that are being blended. This alone drastically increases the potential locomotion system setups that can be achieved with this pack. Additionally, the pack was designed to work with a variety of locomotion system structures, which makes it perfect for this series, as my goal is to teach you how to create the locomotion system that you need for your game, not how to make the specific system that I record myself putting together. Because my focus will be on teaching widely applicable techniques, you will not need this animation set to get most of the value out of this series. However, I cannot guarantee you will be able to implement everything I teach using a different animation set, as it may 
or may not have the necessary animation coverage to implement certain techniques. In the next video, I'll create an animation blueprint to house the system and explain how we can access character movement data in an efficient and thread safe manner to drive our animation logic at runtime. I'll see you there.